And again, we are getting breaking news that what we were expecting may be delayed for a while. This is the second group of hostages held by Hamas that were due to be released today. Probably now will not happen today. This according to Reuters, uh, quoting the armed wing of the Palestinian uh, of, of Hamas, said on Saturday it decided to delay the second round of hostage releases until Israel is committed to letting aid trucks enter northern Gaza. Now, again, we, we haven't confirmed it ourselves, and we don't know exactly which aid trucks they're talking about, whether or not they're allowed to be inspected, and perhaps that's the reason uh, they're having a, a problem accepting the terms of Hamas right now, Israel, that is. Uh, on the phone, we have Israeli Acting Consul General to New York, Aviv Ezra. Uh, sir, thank you for joining us. What do you know, if anything, about the, this delay of the second group of hostages being released? Thank you so much uh, for having me, David. Uh, let me say this. We, this doesn't surprise Israel at all. We're dealing with a brutal, murderous, vicious regime of terrorists. And they have a history of violating ceasefires. This is not the first time. The last ceasefire that we had with them in the previous cycle, they actually made sure two hours after the specific time to go after our soldiers, killing our soldiers, and actually abducting one of the bodies. So we're talking also about a, an organization that uh, plays psychological warfare against innocent civilians, against the feeling of the families, and we know that they cannot be trusted. So as far as I'm concerned, the back and forth is that uh, technically changing uh, this point, uh, the mechanism that was agreed upon is not something that uh, catches me in surprise. There's one thing that I do want to say about it. They will come back because the reason they came in originally to the deal is because they were under pressure and they were under military pressure. And the fact that we were pushed for many weeks to restrain ourselves just proves the indication that if we don't pressure them militarily, they will start playing these uh, unbelievable, uh, uh, unbelievable, uh, uh, cruel uh, playing of games against the families of innocent civilians. You know, there's there's another thing that's happened. Not only your military pressure, but also the the pulling back of the curtain of what they had been doing in Gaza for Lord knows how many years. The the series of tunnels under hospitals and other civilian centers of of Gaza putting putting Palestinian civilians right in the harm's way of any counterattack by Israel. Now we know that that all the stories that we've been hearing about uh, those civilian centers being the, the, the command centers of Hamas are true. We sent in our own reporter, our own Trey Yingst, went into those tunnels right under uh, the hospital in Gaza uh, that was essentially a command center of Hamas. So, so all of their rhetoric, all of their propaganda was proved to be the lies that we suspected they were. A hundred percent. And for many years, we've been getting these pushbacks saying, well, you can't prove it. You can't show us that this is the reality. And as you said, not that we just uh, originally uh, just recently proved it uh, through the media echelons. It was also independently verified both by the White House and, of course, the president himself. We are talking about uh, an, a terroristic organization that embodies themselves in civilians, specifically hiding behind uh, civilians, going uh, underneath hospitals, schools, mosques, they do that because they know that our our moral, the Jewish moral, the Israeli moral, is not going after these locations. This needs to be condemned by the international community. I have yet to hear the UN saying that. I have yet to hear other forces that are, uh, I would say, for many years being uh, uh, focusing only on Israel. And I think you mentioned very correctly in the previous segment that uh, this is all Iranian fingerprints everywhere. You can see it here in Hamas. You can see it in the northern front with Hezbollah. You can see it through the Houthis that are coming after us. These are multi-fronts that Iran has been working, and we need to make sure to continue the pressure on Iran, too, because they're the source of all of this. Now, le let me ask specifically, get in the weeds a little about the ceasefire itself. We've heard that uh, the terms of the ceasefire, which apparently are in flux right now, but include uh, release of 10 hostages would, would allow for one extra day of, of a ceasefire. Uh, when you count up the number of hostages that Hamas has control over, that would, that would amount to a ceasefire of about a full month. Wouldn't that give Hamas time to, to regroup 
and, and possibly eliminate the gains that uh, Israel has made militarily? The mechanism that we have uh, crafted was a mechanism of the first four days in which 50 uh, uh, hostages will be uh, released. And, and then every day further will be an, an additional 10 hostages. However, there, I don't see uh, the, the agreement continuing for 20 days. I don't see it continuing for two days very easily. And I do want to make a very, very uh, important point here. There is no moral equivalence between the hostages that are being released from the Hamas brutal regime and between uh, the prisoners that we are exchanging. We, we, we are, our, our people are not prisoners. They are, ten year, they are two years old, four years old, six years old, eight years old, mothers without children, children without mother. On the other, who, I mean, who takes a granny or a 10-month-old hostage? And on the other hand, we have to release these uh, sometimes 15 years old, 50, sometimes uh, women that have been uh, convicted terrorists in attacks against Israelis. Sometimes they did, most of the time they didn't succeed, but they were violently attacking Israelis through stabbing throwing molotov grenades, et cetera, at Israelis. So we're talking about no moral equivalency, no doubt about that. No, clearly there's, there's no moral equivalency between a two-year-old and, and a, a Hamas fighter. But uh, specifically, just to re-ask re, uh, the question, is it conceivable that you could lose a lot of the ground you've made against Hamas the longer this pause continues? Well, I wouldn't say that this is a, a, the best uh, uh, situation for the IDF at this point, but because we, but, but it's doable, because we have defined two goals for this campaign, as you know well, very well. First of all, to eradicate Hamas, and that goes into the future to make sure that they will not threaten us again. But the second, of course, is into looking into the with an eye to the past and making sure that all of our uh, hostages will be released freely. So these two goals are interwined in a sense. And I, I also want to talk about the fact that the, 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 the major point of eradicating Hamas is not about vengeance, not about revenge. It's about the sheer fact that if we would not eradicate Hamas as a military threat to Israel, we would not be able to bring hundreds of thousands of Israelis that are displaced now back to their, uh, to their uh, communities and kibbutzim because uh, these murderous regimes will, could continue attacking Israel. And they have said it out loud. They're not shy about it. They want to annihilate the state of Israel. So at the end of the day, to your question, these two uh, goals interwind. We're looking with an eye to the past to save all of our hostages, but with an eye to the future to eradicate their capabilities to go after us. Aviv Ezra, Israeli Acting Consul General in New York. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you being here. Hey, it's Will Kane. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News channel on YouTube. It's the best way to get our latest interviews and highlights. And click to subscribe to the Will Kane podcast for full episodes right now.